Uh, good morning, we're prosecution and we're arguing that regular field water surface testing should be mandated and maximum residue limit should be enforced through fines. Overuse of chemicals is creating an environmental runoff and agronomic concern with chemical runoff and high residue levels in food. <coughs> MRLs are limitations on the amount or to the amount of residue legally allowed in foods and they are important to keep people healthy and safe as pesticide exposure has been linked to birth defects, reproductive effects and or ne neurotoxicity and other negative effects on human and animals. Hello everyone, my name is Caroline and this is my partner Jordan. Today we are defending the claim that producers should not be fined for maximum residue limits in surface water and that regular field surface water testing is not necessary. Maximum residue limits are already set far below any level that would affect humans and enforcing fines would likely not make a huge difference. Pesticides allow for higher yields and better quality food, which in turn enhances our quality of life. The use of pesticides has also decreased the practice of tillage. No-till practices have increased soil health and decreased erosion, a factor that has contributed to chemical runoff in the past. Although pesticides can have their harmful effects, there are already regulations in place to ensure that the proper precautions are in place to protect the environment while still allowing producers to grow a good crop. Maximum residue levels are set well below anything that would be hazardous to consumers, which is important. However, if there is no penalty for going over residue limits, residue limit will keep increasing, likely to a point where they can become hazardous to consumers. The only way to inform, enforce these residues limits stay well below hazardous levels is if fines are put in place. According to my evidence number two, there is a 5.1% runoff of the total pesticide used in the field and it affects the non-target organisms like fish and affects the other organisms also. What would you like to say about it? According to Egg Canada, since 1981, Canada has been in the desired and good categories of the risk of water contamination by pesticides performance index. Yes, pesticides can be toxic to non-target <coughs> organisms, but depending on the dosage. Most studies are done or connected or conducted by exposing the organisms to high doses of the chemical that would relatively never occur. How can pesticides be singled out when other factors such as pollution not also be contributing factors with our growing human population? There are many benefits to the use of pesticides in agriculture, but published literature and media are too often only focused on hazards. In developing countries, these benefits are particularly important. Losses because of pests can cost billions of dollars to the national income. In addition to these monetary losses, foregoing these pesticides can lead to hunger and malnutrition, which, according to UNICEF, leads to the deaths of between 12 and 15 million children each year. With increased fines, reduced amounts of pesticides will be used each year, resulting in reduced yields. How do you propose to keep these yield yields maximized with the tax in place? Uh, we agree that proper nutrition is helpful to reduce the health problems, but we are talking about the pesticides runoff that occurs when the use of pesticides is over the regulated limit and the proper agronomic practices are not followed. And then the benefits of pesticides overlap its benefits and can, ca can cause severe health problems like cancer, as stated in our evidence number three. This problem is not because of the use of pesticides, but because of the overdosage in, used in agriculture. Um, pesticides and fertilizers do benefit crop with increased yields and quality. However, it has negative, um, many negative effects as well. How can you justify that the fact that because it has benefits, there's no need to consider the bad effects? Um, in 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer released a statement saying glyphosate was probably carcinogenic to humans. This is highly disputable as the research conducted was with such high doses, no human or organism would really ever come in contact with that amount. As far as studies conducted on animals, the animals are given higher amounts of pesticide than a human would come in contact with under normal cir circumstances. Doses of glyphosate were administered directly orally and within the stomach. These cancer claims can be dismissed as organisms are able to excrete and metabolize these chemicals quite easily. <coughs> People overestimate the danger of pesticides in comparison to other hazards such as food preservatives. Earlier research by Hibbett in 1990 rated 30 different hazards according to number of deaths per year. 
Pesticides were ranked 28th on this list, behind food preservatives, which were ranked 27th. Yet we knowingly ingest food preservatives every day. Why place a tax on pesticide residues for a perceived risk? Pesticides do have many benefits for crops. This doesn't change the fact on the negative effects. Several studies have shown that pesticides remain in the atmosphere, the ground, and in the waterways a long time after the job is complete. Due to this, and uh, the chemicals have been used for many years, this has created a buildup of pop, uh, pollution in the environment. Uh, rather than field surface water testing, what is an alternative way to monitor runoff and residue limits? Currently, Canada has a pest management regulatory agency. The goal of the PMRA is to ensure pesticides are regulated and pose minimal risk to human health and the environment. They reevaluate every pesticide on a 15 year cycle to ensure the products meet current scientific standards and promote some sustainable pest management. With these management practices in place, the current water contamination index states that Canadian waters are in a good ta category. Why tax farmers for a misconceived risk? Since you state current water residues are such a danger, what change would you make to the current PMRA for regulating this? Yes, the goal, uh, yes, the goal of the PMRA is to ensure pesticides are regulated and pose minimum risk to human health and the environment. But still, there is runoff from fields and strict regulations are required. Moreover, the situation in Canada is different than other countries in the world. For example, in Asian countries, where population is much bigger in size than, than in Canada, it's not easy to control runoff without strict reg regulations like fines. Um, fines have been proven to enforce many different laws as no one likes paying fines. Um, how will chemical runoff and M MRLs be enforced if fines are not put in place? MRLs are already enforced and they're well regulated as people test the waters and test their food products. A load of grain can be sent back if residues are too high. And farmers are well aware of the current situation with the new spray drift technology. This reduces the amount of residues going into our water systems. <clears throat> Pesticide use is increasing in the agriculture sector due to the implementation of no-till cropping, which in theory should increase the risk of residue in our waters. But with these new practices, the result is a healthier soil, soil with reduced weed pressure. A healthier soil leads to less erosion and less of a chance of leaching these pesticides into our water sources. We've also seen the addition of beneficial management practices such as sanitation practices, scouting and monitoring crops for the presence of harmful organisms, forecasting systems to inform pest management decisions, and also new spray drift technology. Would you not agree that with all the new innovations and information available to producers, that agriculture is greatly advancing in reducing water residue from pesticide, pesticide applications already? If the farmers are using proper practices for tillage and applying the proper doses of the pesticide, then they should not worry about any fines because after testing surface water, we can find out that the runoff is under MRLs and or not. Uh, fines will be there only if the contamination level is above the critical limits. Uh, in one of your evidences, uh, you are saying that the potential benefits are particularly important in doubling in countries. And uh, uh, where pests cost billions of the dollars in national income and farm post-harvesting losses contribute to hunger and malnutrition. But we are not, talk, uh, not saying that pesticides should not be used or banned. We are talking about some regulations to control the overuse of pesticides. And the earnings from the fines implemented can be used by the government to improve the health services too. So uh, what is your opinion on this? With increased fines for farmers, that'll decrease revenues. With more increased input costs, there'll be less pesticides used, and farms will try to cheat the system using less water rates and be less effective. This will make yields decreased. This will help. This will ruin farmers' yields, cost more to the farmer, and put more money into our government's hands. 
and make food even more expensive. For better crop production in the future, sustainable cultivation practices are required in the present. So to achieve this goal of sustainability, the authorities have to take some important steps. Fines on the detection of the pesticides in surface water should be implemented so that risks to environment and health can be minimized. Government can also generate some revenue out of it that can be used to find out more ways to minimize the runoff and to support the health services. Just to make sure that farmers are following proper tillage practices and using proper amounts of pesticides, testing of surface water is required. We're not talking about the ban of pesticides, but more regulation and required for better, clean, and healthy production of food. The hazards of pesticides are well documented, but their benefits are largely ignored in published lit literature and the mass media. There is perceived risk versus real risk when the topic of pesticides is brought into conversation. Farmers are at the risk of losing revenue with the imposed tax for service water residues, when in fact there is no risk at all. The risk of water contamination by pesticides performance index states that Canada is still in the good category resulting from farming activities. With current farming practices, more widely adopting the no-till approach results greater yields and greater soil health is improving, and also greater revenues are being generated, which can be invested into our education or the economy. Taxing farmers for a misconceived risk is unfair as there is little to no current risk. Food and water quality will generally remain the same with the tax imposed. Producers and consumers will be the only ones hurt from higher prices resulting from the tax.